Well, let's talk more with Dr. Mike Martin, Senior Visiting Research Fellow in the Department of War Studies at King's College London and author of How to Fight a War. He's also the Liberal Democrat parliamentary candidate for Tunbridge Wells. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, so you. is this then how to fight a war at this stage? It is. I mean, what we're going to see in the spring is both sides are going to go on the offensive. I think the Russians in the east and the Ukrainians probably in the south. And uh, for that, Ukraine needs tanks. And so that's why uh, this announcement is so welcome, because it also unlocks uh, tanks from other countries as well, like Poland and the US. Um, Vladimir Zelensky says the numbers that he is talking is a minimum of 300, some saying it should be around 500 of these tanks. Uh, and the expectation is of an imminent offensive. Um, how, how much of a, of a gap is there? So I, I, I think um, Zelensky is doing what we would all do, and he would ask for as many tanks as he can. 300 is a lot of tanks. And, and most importantly, the logistics to run 300 tanks put, would put a huge strain, I think, on the Ukrainians' ability to supply those tanks once they're in the field. And of course, if they run out of fuel and ammunition, they're just expensive targets. I think if Ukraine could get up to 100 or 150 tanks, that starts to look like a tank brigade or if you mix it in with armoured infantry and we've seen a number of armoured infantry vehicles also being given to Ukraine, mm -hmm. that starts to look like an armoured division. That's sufficient uh, to punch through uh, the Russian lines depending on the exact uh, position that they choose to attack in. And just explain exactly why it is that the Leopard 2 is the, has become the focus of all of this. What is so special about the Leopard 2? Well, I think one aspect of it is political, and that is that all the countries want to uh, move to donate particular types of equipment at the same time. But the Leopard uh, uh, and the Challenger and the Abrahams, which are all uh, Western tanks, all are fairly similar. So on technical specification, there isn't much of an advantage. But the Leopard has the advantage of being the most popular tank uh, in Europe. So if Germany both gives its tanks and gives permission for Poland and other countries to give Leopard tanks, what that does is, it, again, it all comes back to logistics. It makes it much easier for the Ukrainians to field that force because it will be the same type of tank and therefore the logistics to keep them in the field, spare parts, fuel, ammunition, will be much simpler. So it looks like the number that you mentioned of about 100 to 150 Leopard tanks being mm. the sort of figure that would would make a difference would enable Ukraine to punch through it looks like that's an achievable number relatively quickly if it is how would you anticipate things on the ground moving uh, and where the balance will lie in the months ahead so uh, uh, the next big thing to look for is the spring offensives from both sides and so that will, well, the invasion was launched on the 24th of February. So from that date onwards, I would guess, is when both sides are thinking about making advances. Now, that, this is why there's been such a hullabaloo over these tanks, because really we're at the last safe moment for that political decision to be made, because now those tanks have to be physically got into Ukraine mm. and the tank crews need to be trained and practiced on them. And then, you know, the logistics pipeline needs to be set up. So I think now the race is on to... Once now the decision has been made to get those tanks in the field, get the Ukrainians trained on them, and we're looking end of February, beginning of March for the offensives from both sides, from the Russians and the Ukrainians. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, Dr. Mike Martin.